talking with the experts. In episode 367, Shannon Gregg discusses how even if your business is small, collecting, analyzing, and using data will help you to drive revenue success. So I ended up writing this book as a mistake. <laughs> I was oh, it could never be a mistake. <laughs> this one was. I was presenting at a conference on sales effectiveness for the National Advertisers Bureau. And they said, you're going to present with this guy. And I said, who's this guy? I don't present with this guy. And they said, the two of you are presenting your topics together in a total topic on time management. And when I started working with him on developing our presentation, he said, this is something a lot of people ask for. We should turn it into a book. And so we did. We wrote a book about time management, which is critical for everybody, but particularly business owners, because every minute represents money, right? So it, it came out. It's been really popular with sales teams. It's short because if you don't have time, you don't have a lot of time to read a book either. <laughs> Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to Talking With The Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the experts is about all things business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it all on all good podcasting, streaming platforms, and on YouTube. Now, have you ever thought about data-driven sales and, and how that can help you with your marketing success? Well, even if your business is small, collecting, analyzing, and using data will help you to drive revenue success. Tools like CRMs, uh, even if you use a spreadsheet for your CRM, which thankfully I don't, but <laughs> but they can help you to understand where your best prospects are, how to target uh, for your um, uh, best audience and what activities drive conversion and so on. Revenue operations is not just a tool for enterprise-sized organisations. My next guest, Shannon J. Gregg. Uh, she is the president of Cloud Adoption Solutions. It's a sales process and salesforce.com consulting practice. She also provides keynote talks, consulting and workshops on sales productivity. Her popular book, It's About Time, is available now and is being used by sales teams across the US and other countries to refocus on what's really important to drive revenue and results. She also instructs the professional selling course at Point Park University. Welcome, Shannon, and or I should call you Dr. Shannon. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I am more than pleased to be visiting with you today. Ah, I'm so glad that someone's pleased to be here. I mean, I'm doubly pleased, but, you know, it's not always the pleasure that it could be. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, how did you get into um, data-driven sales and, and what does it do to bring about marketing success other than the things that I explained previously? Well, remarkably, my genesis was um, starting as an English literature major. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, one of the things that's so great about sales is you can start from anywhere. And marketing, you can start from anywhere. A lot of people think, oh, I have to have a business degree in order to be really good at running a company or running sales. And it just isn't true. What you need is a high level of intellectual curiosity and the ability to say, I need to understand when I need to change. And data is the best way to understand. Here's when I know I need to change. Here's when I know I should refocus my sales and marketing efforts in order to drive better revenue for my company. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't know what your numbers are, then it, there's no point. And But you have to be able to understand the numbers. And a lot of people don't understand them and they don't know how to understand them because it's not one of their zones of genius so how can they uh, maybe learn um, you know just the basics that is the best question that I've ever heard because I think a lot of people get so scared when they hear data because they think 
I'm not a data scientist. A data scientist sounds like, you know, the great wizard of Oz who hides behind this long green curtain and presses a lot of buttons and makes things happen. And the reality, Rose, is data just tells you a story. So you have to look for the story that the data is telling you and look inside of it and say, as I evaluate this numbers, what story is that telling me? And that will help you understand how you should refocus your story so that your business can turn the way that it needs to. Yeah, but you know, what sort of numbers should they be looking at? You know, should they be looking at their profit and loss? Should they be looking at number of sales, the number of, um, you know, if they've got a product, number of returns, you know, what is important to, um, you know, to get that marketing success? Yes, so you've heard the terrible phrase, this is how you eat an elephant one bite at a time. And that's exactly how data should be as well. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed because they're looking at all of the numbers at once. So I would say, if you're looking to add a new team member, that's the time to look and say, what's my profit and loss? What's my gross margin? Can I afford this team member? And you can start to look at your projections and understand where your pipeline is so that you can look at the bottom line number to understand what type of discernible impact adding a new team member would have on your numbers. And then once you start to get good at understanding the story that that data is telling you in a simple way for a predictable outcome, you can begin to look at more and more numbers. And so I almost think it's like working out. You have your arms day, you have your legs day. And so data days can be exactly the same. You may have finance driven data days, operations driven data days, sales and marketing driven data days. Yeah, but um, I guess for people who aren't number orientated and have no interest in numbers, would it be advisable to go to their, you know, um, accountant or their bookkeeper to get these figures? So I think a lot of people do use an accountant or a bookkeeper, and I prescribe to that methodology as well. But one of the things that a lot of people do is put their blinders on and say, somebody else is taking care of it. <laughs> They've got mm. it for me. And it's really good to be a student of that and say, all right, now's the time for me to understand when you say P&L, what does profit really mean? What goes into profit? And what does loss really mean? And what goes into loss? And you don't have to dig so deep that you become a data scientist, but you do have to be able to understand, is the bookkeeper telling me a consistent story? Can I make decisions based on this story? And am I sure that my bookkeeper is giving me the clear, honest truth? Yeah, I, I mean, if you're going to have a business, you need to understand your numbers. I, I totally understand that. I mean, I did a, a, a course some years ago in small business management, and it was really surprised me the the things that you needed to or should know as a small business owner that a lot of people that go into business have no clue about. And um, marketing was one of the things, I mean, I just thought marketing was going and delivering pamphlets and putting in someone's letterbox. And, but there's a lot more to it than, you know, just the social media memes or, or posts that you put up. There's a lot more to marketing. And maybe you could explain it in, a, in simple terms, what, for those who don't really understand what it is, what marketing really is or what it consists of. I would argue that market, uh, marketing is all driven by data science and metrics. So everything that happens in marketing can and should be measured. And there is this sort of um, method of saying, I can measure all of these numbers. And if you're using social media, which is one part of marketing, those numbers are readily available to you. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they'll tell you this is how many impressions you got. Those are vanity metrics though. The number of times somebody viewed your tweet does not tell you now this is where they've converted. This is where they've entered my funnel. This is where they've become a true prospect. Now I have an opportunity with them. And so I encourage, just like you would for anything that you're doing, if you were writing a story or if you were thinking about a vacation, begin with the end in mind. So where do you want to be? So marketing says, okay, we want to increase sales by 6%. How are we going to do that? And so you work backwards to say, where are our ledges so that we can evaluate the data to say, now we've done enough. So if you're looking at gaining more revenue from your current customers, is it raising prices? Is it introducing new products? And that data is going to start to tell you the story. So don't be seduced by those sort of vanity metrics that social media gives to you because they're selling that data to you, right? They want you to buy sponsored ads and they want you to put money in their product. 
but I would say begin with the end in mind. What's your ultimate end goal? And then work your marketing data strategy backwards from there. Mm. Yeah, good, good, uh, good advice, actually. I mean, you're right. The, the insights that social media give you are ego driven. They're not all vanity numbers. They're not anything that tells you about anything else unless you actually pay and then they get into your funnel. Um, yeah, you know, I was speaking to someone uh, earlier today about funnels and, you know, how they work and, and you know, what the five steps are that you need to, you know, get people to actually get into the bottom of this funnel. And, uh, and marketing obviously is one of those things. And without marketing, you can't really get them into the top of the funnel anyway. So um, I would urge people to... Uh, maybe make a bit of an effort to learn about how it actually works because otherwise you're going to be stuck. I completely agree. And one of the things people forget is the marketing doesn't end once you've had that conversion. So if you've made the sale or, you know, acquired somebody in a customer in the way that your business does it, you don't stop there. No. <laughs> you can do market to them afterwards. And a lot of people forget about that part. Mm. They actually do. Yeah. I, and um, I, you know, in the early days of my business, I was the same, you know, you get the sale and then you, you just, well, move on to the next person and, you know, you, you wouldn't uh, nurture the existing client at all. And I think that's something that people need to learn as well is that you've got to, still got to nurture your current clients because, you know, they could buy from you again uh, if you do it in the, in the right way. And a lot of marketing, like email marketing or, you know, just a phone call every now and again to see, oh, just to check in with them to see how they are. It's so true. And I think a lot of people think about, you know, acquisition marketing. How do I find more customers? And the reality is you're exactly right. They could buy from you again. They certainly know people. They've got a network of people who are very similar to them. Mm -hmm. And if they're already in your you know, best client profile, they probably know people who are as well. Mm, absolutely. Yep. Yep. So tell me a bit about your book, Shannon. So I ended up writing this book as a mistake. <laughs> I was oh, it could never be a mistake. <laughs> this one was. I was presenting at a conference on sales effectiveness for the National Advertisers Bureau. And they said, you're going to present with this guy. And I said, who's this guy? I don't present with this guy. And they said, the two of you are presenting your topics together in a total topic on time management. And when I started working with him on developing our presentation, he said, this is something a lot of people ask for. We should turn it into a book. And so we did. We wrote a book about time management, which is critical for everybody, but particularly business owners, because every minute represents money, right? So it, it came out. It's been really popular with sales teams. It's short because if you don't have time, you don't have a lot of time to read a book either. <laughs> so Jenny, it's an audio book. That's a great idea. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think we will. Yeah. Um, I had a had a, a guest on mm, early this year, and uh, she lives in Toronto. And uh, she uh, recorded her audio book during COVID, during all the lockdowns. And she actually converted her wardrobe or her closet into a recording studio, and recorded her book. And um, she says that audio books are really popular for for those that don't have the time to read. That makes really good sense. I will say Toronto is my favorite North American city. It is so great there. And I love the idea of COVID conversions. A lot of people used COVID as a time to say, now how do I work on my house or my body or my business or my overall brain space? And that is a really interesting story. And I think we saw a lot of innovation around 2010, right? You saw Airbnb, Uber, some of these giant technologies. And I think that sort of fourth techno technological industrial revolution everybody's promising, the genesis was there. But I can't wait to see what the 10-year impact is of COVID because there's been a ton of stories about COVID creativity in business. Absolutely. Yeah, I think for, for all of the harm that it did, it's done a lot of things. It's opened the world up to us. I mean, how often would you have a Zoom conversation, you know, before COVID with anybody? And now it's like, you know, we, we, we're almost next door neighbours, basically. It's just so, it's so much um, more convenient. You know, you don't have to travel. You can have a meeting across town and not leave your office or even your bedroom <laughs> if that's where your office is. 
You're so right. And we saw, particularly in my business, a lot of small businesses finally commit to that digitization project that they had thought about for the past 10 years. So it made a lot of businesses more efficient and more effective. And it certainly opened the doors to talent and conversations and customers pretty much globally. So you're right. COVID caused a lot of disruption, but some of that disruption was definitely for the good. Yeah, absolutely. I I totally agree with that. Um, Shannon, I know your book's about time management. Where can people find your book? It's on Amazon. And I will tell you one of my favorite lessons from the book that I want to share today is flex your no muscle. That is one of the things that a lot of people are brought up thinking I should say yes, let me find a way to say yes. And one of the things that we found a lot of people do is overcommit themselves because being crazy busy (laughs) is really heralded as success really in our society. And it's not. And so the, the whole point of the book is find out the things that are the most important to you and make sure that you get them done. And sometimes it's done by editing things out really. Yes, yes. Uh, and time management is, uh, was one of my favorite topics when I was doing this course. I loved it. It was uh, um, because I like to manage my time and, and I don't say much now because I just go with the flow. But back in the day, <laughs> it was really critical for me to have, you know, timelines to follow all the time so that, you know, I could get my task done. So I didn't get to that burnout stage and I was overdoing stuff. You're right. And a lot of times when you're seeking guidance on time management, there are specific prescriptions that say you should block your schedule or you should follow this 15 minute technique. And everybody's a little bit different, right? Some people can compartmentalize and some people can say, I'll do this for a little bit of time and switch over to here. And so it's all about finding what works best for you so that you can slay that time dragon and say, now I'm finding time for the things that are really important and critical for me. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Everyone is has their own um, inner clock and I think they should follow that and not follow some someone else's rules that suits them and doesn't suit the, the person concerned. So, yeah. Shannon, where can people find you if they want to work with you, uh, learn more about you or come and meet I you or you do whatever? Yes, I really want people to find me. I love making human connections. And you're right, COVID has opened us up. So now globally, we can make connections. And we only really become stronger when we learn from each other. So please do add me on Twitter. I'm at Shannon J. Gregg. I'm also on LinkedIn at Shannon J. Gregg. My website is shannongregg.com. And I truly, truly look forward to meeting people and talking to them more if they want to learn about data-driven efforts in sales and marketing. Yeah, it's really important, um, you know, getting back to our topic because we've got a bit sidetracked, but <laughs> but yeah, um, um, just reiterating that, you know, you really need to know your numbers. Um, it's so critical. If you don't know what they are, then, you know, go and get someone that can help you or teach you about them. That's right. And there's loads of resources available. And I would think just get yourself in the brain space to say, I don't have to tackle it all at once. Let me find one number that will help me make good data-driven decisions in my business and make sure that you learn from it. You know, closing your eyes and saying, I've got a guy who does that is never the best way to run your business. No, it isn't. No, you shouldn't leave those sorts of tasks to, to others because if you don't know, then you don't know. You're exactly right. (laughs) Shannon, would you like to share something, um, some words of wisdom or some tidbit or some offering that you might have at, at the moment? My favorite words of wisdom for everybody are just ask the question, because if you don't, you're already at no. So if you've got a question for somebody, if you want to ask somebody a sales question, if you want to ask an expert a question, just ask them, because if they don't answer you or don't give the answer that you want, that's okay because you're not any worse off than you were before. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Yep. Yeah. I, um, I actually asked the question of someone who's uh, quite a well-known podcaster to come onto my podcast and I kept asking and asking and he finally got sick of me asking and said, yes. So <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Shannon, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've had an absolute ball. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. The pleasure was definitely mine. (laughs) Talk to you soon. Take care. 
You've been listening to Talking With The Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.